present our series of scaphoid non-union repairs using a mini open technique. The problem with the scaphoid non-union is that if untreated a very predictable pattern of arthritis will develop. These images show an earlier stage of arthritis and a later stage and the image on the right shows a salvage procedure known as a four corner fusion often required in a later stage. The target case for many open technique was a stable scaphoid non-union, one without a humpback deformity, major bone loss, or instability. In all cases, we used fluoroscopy, or C-arm, to study the wrist under live image, making sure that the proximal and distal poles moved as a unit, and there was no gapping across the fracture site. Our theory is that stable scaphoid non-unions have an intact cartilage envelope, allowing drill tract grafting and limited exposure. In general, the surgical goals are to place bone graft to fill the void and to stimulate healing, while also placing stable fixation, typically a screw. The gold standard is a volar approach, using structural graft from either the iliac crest or the distal radius. Placement of a screw and surgical time ranging anywhere from 75 to 150 minutes. So what's possible? In our series we used a dorsal approach, multiple cores of distal radial bone graft, debridement of the non-union and grafting down the screw tract, preserving the intact cartilage envelope, screw fixation, and surgical time ranging from 45 to 60 minutes, with an average just above 50 minutes. A quick run through the surgical technique involves a two centimeter longitudinal incision over the top of the wrist and then a four to six millimeter longitudinal incision within the joint capsule exposing the proximal pole of the scaphoid. The guide wire is inserted to a center axis position within the scaphoid after which time depth measurement is made and the guide wire is then driven through the trapezium and out the base of the thenar muscles with the thumb extended. After drilling the scaphoid over the guide wire the guide wire is retracted to the level of the non-union. This gives access to the non-union for debridement and ultimately bone grafting. At this point, cores of bone graft are harvested from the distal radius and injected at the level of the non-union. We continue to harvest and inject until basically the bone has been filled from inside out. The fact that the cartilage cap is intact, bone graft doesn't extrude. At this point, we pass the guide wire back across the non-union site and out the dorsal wound. The pre-measured screw is inserted, and we basically wait for healing. 